Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has been ousted after losing a vote of no confidence. Earlier, Mr Khan said that he will not accept an opposition government and warned that the US was leading a conspiracy to remove him. The acting Speaker of the House announced the results of the vote just a few hours ago. <laughs> Former Prime Minister Imran Khan and Chief of PTI has claimed that the United States, India and Israel had conspired against him. He said that the imported government of Shabazz Sharif has increased the price of gas by 45% in the dark of the night. Folks, it's clear that the hidden hand or the Dajjal system has brought Shabazz Sharif to power because he will abide by their orders and it's already happening. He's taken the first order to increase gas prices rather than buying cheap gas from Russia. Russia has offered, but it appears Shabazz Sharif does not want to help the Pakistani nation. By taking orders from the International Monetary Fund, inflation is now sky high in Pakistan hitting a record of 13.8%. Imran Khan was a beacon of hope for Pakistanis to build a future. However, it appears the hidden powers want Pakistan to go backward and become a vessel for the Yankee Empire. They've been playing with Pakistan for a while. Pakistan is characterized by coups and the transfer of power by force. There are at least four successful ones alone, in 1953-54, to 54, in 1958, in 1977 and 99. And today, Pakistanis are faced with a choice. To choose between the old system of governance, where coups are plenty, or a stable government, led by an intelligent and charismatic leader, Imran Khan, or as they say in the country itself, Purana Ya Naya. When Imran Khan's party was removed from power by a vote of no confidence, the formal voiced reason from the opposition was the inability to cope with galloping inflation and the fall of the Pakistani rupee. However, after a month and a half since Imran Khan's resignation, the rupee weakened even more and inflation continued at a record pace, which clearly tells us that the vote of no confidence due to inflation and the fall of rupee was just an excuse. The real reason for his removal was because Imran Khan had a foreign policy, which the West and the system of the Dajjal didn't endorse. Imran Khan, having come to power, promised the country great changes, not only in domestic policy, but also in foreign policy. Its main tasks were to strengthen the position of Pakistan among friendly Arab countries in cooperation with China and turn towards Russia and Central Asia. The emergency cessation of the American military operation in Afghanistan and the simultaneous withdrawal of troops in the summer of 2021 with the simultaneous transfer of the country under the control of the Taliban made Pakistan a key figure in any negotiations on Central Asia and for settling the Afghan issue. And of course the Americans could not stand the idea of an Asian country, a Muslim country with nuclear weapons yielding influence in the region. America, Israel and India played their cards well to get Imran Khan out of power, but we must realize it's easy to do so. The Pakistani military and the political elite are joined up. Most of their savings are kept in banks in the United Kingdom or the United States. Their children, grandchildren get education or work in the West. Most of them do business in the West. I know, I went to school with them. In general, I'd say the Pakistani elite have strong dependence on the Anglo-Saxon world, the world of Gog and Magog. So it's very easy to pull strings in Pakistan. With the same breath, I'll tell you, if Pakistanis continue their struggle and try to bring Imran Khan back to power, things could become even more costly as Washington will not be happy and no doubt they'll try to break Pakistan into three pieces by taking advantage of rogue movements sprouting up in Balochistan and Sindh.
but they must struggle. Because even if there's no hope of victory, it's better to perish than to live as slaves. And there is a God, and there's things such as miracles. Confrontation between the old and the new Pakistan is currently taking place. And I urge Pakistanis to participate in movements voicing their concerns, whether it be by supporting Imran Khan in marches or participating in electronic warfare, you must fight to establish free and fair elections out there. The imported government is clearly preparing for a confrontation. I've been in touch with Pakistanis on ground and the capital is heavily fortified. No one is allowed to enter into a dialogue with Imran Khan. The press is constantly slandering him and putting forward more and more unsubstantiated accusations. What Pakistan needs is no foreign intervention in its political process. It needs the legislative, executive and judicial branches of power vested in separate bodies along with the military staying out of politics. What Pakistan needs is a revolution. And revolution is not an apple that falls when it's ripe. You have to make it fall. Good luck, Pakistan.